I'm your host with the most welcome 23. You're joining me for High School Story, Book 3, Chapter 3, The Ones Who Got Away. I hope you're all having a great day. Wednesday after school. Sit down in the saxophone section next to the horse kid with short hair. Hey, I'm John. You're? Uh, Cameron, nice to meet you. Uh, care to tune me up? Ah, she looks like uh, Emma Gonzalez from Florida? Question mark. And on, and the two of you tune your saxophones. Soon, Ezra calls everyone to attention. Welcome to Concert Band, people. We're gonna play some dope music, curated by Aiden. Aiden takes a little bow and joins Ezra at the front. I made some changes to the older pieces to fit the season and added in some new sections. Uh, follow along in your sheets music while I demonstrate the melody, starting at bar 15. He plays a beautiful melody, rich with emotional tune. He stops and looks up. That was terrific. I don't see who in the right mind would make this a 6-8 time signature. 3-4 would be much simpler and more elegant. Aiden frowns at him. That's... that's... maybe I'll consider it. John, a soul starting at bar 120 is yours. Aiden wrote it with you in mind. Aiden, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Hey, I don't mean to spoil the moment, but shouldn't there be auditions for the solo? I was first chair at hers. They have a point. I should also be first chair for clarinet, and I can prove it in five minutes. Unless there's a favoritism because John's your, from your school. Oh, there. Am I playing favorites? Hold on. That's a fair point. You should get a chance. <sighs> no, because if you go, It was wrong for me! I'm gonna just gonna be disaster the old-fashioned way. Even though I'm on her, maybe Cameron's right. I just want a chance to show what I can do. Hmm. Aiden, uh, would you be okay with opening up auditions? Seems only fair. Okay, John, take the solo from uh, 120 to 140, and Cameron can pick it up at 165. Got it, thank you. you look at the notes from in front of you, reading A G E. Three, two, one, play! A G E, remember. The band begins and you play along with them. Soon you reach the solo. Hey! You hit the first note perfectly, paying attention to your tone and temperature. Beautiful. You take a breath for the next note. G. You smoothly hit a G, feeling the vibrato in your chest as you play. Magnificent! John's really good. You prepare for the last note of the sequence. E. You hit the last note with a startling accuracy. It reverberates through the music room. Bravo! Bravo! Cameron takes over, hitting nearly every high note. Or every note with precision and ease. Dang, they're good. Beast ends, and you and Cameron set down your instruments and look at Ezra expectantly. So what did you think? You both sounded hella good, especially since you were sight reading. Agreed, that sounded even better than it did in my head. Both beam and thank him. Cameron was clearly better with superior training from Hus. The solo's theirs, yes? Actually, currently it's neither yours. What does that mean? It means that, for now, You'll switch off playing the solo each time we'll practice. We'll have formal auditions later on before the concert. That means we both tied. What? You can't be serious. You have to pick one of them. Oh yeah? Which would you pick, Aiden? I... Point taken. See how had you goofed up? You would have failed. And then she would have got it. But it's a tie. Aha! See? Yes, I'll take a tie any day over losing. I just need time to decide. All right, let's stop arguing and take it from the top. You sigh and pick up your sacks, trying not to look at Cameron. Why? You both did fantastic. I'd shake her hand and be like, welcome to the band. A few hours later. But the game needs drama. 
You're stopping by your locker before heading home for the day when Cameron approaches you. Hey, listen, I hope you're not upset about my wanting that solo. I just really liked it and it would be an honor to play and there aren't many sax solos. Cameron, of course I'm not mad. Too bad that solo's mine. If I was an egotistical jerk. <laughs> the beast in the cage goes, take it. Of course I'm not mad. You're a talented sax player. Hey, thanks. You're pretty good yourself. I'm surprised you're complimenting me. It's called friendly competition. Why? I'm used to musicians being too competitive to act like human beings. Well, that's not how I do things. Thanks for being cool, then. Anytime. Good luck. Good luck. Now I gotta go. You and Cameron wave goodbye to each other. You finish packing up to head home, still worried about the upcoming auditions. That's what people don't get about me. I'll explain at the end. That evening. You're hanging out home with Emma and your dad when you hear a knock at the door. Who could that be? No, John. You're supposed to be say, who's there? Oh, sounds like a good reason for him not to say that. Ooh, Emma got you. The three of you hurry to the door to find a curvy blonde woman standing on the front porch. Dad, did you get a date? Oh, it's Emma's mom. Okay. Hey, uh, Dad. Psst, she's pretty. Hey, Psst, Dad. You should make coffee puns with her. Hi, I'm Julia, Emma's mom. She left her phone in the car. She hands him or her phone. Uh, pleased to meet you, Julia. You remind me of another Julia I used to know. She was a... Your father suddenly stops speaking as his jaw drops. Wait a second. Julia Mason? She looks at him for a moment, stunned. Oh my god, Scott Lee? Is that you? Hang on, you two know each other? Your dad doesn't seem to hear you. I, uh, Julie, it's, it's very nice to see you again. Since you know our kids go to school together, uh, anyway, you look great. Oh, no, 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 no. But thank you, you too. Uh, would you like to stay for the movie? Maybe a, a glass or something? I, um, would love to, but I was just on my way to work. Goodbye. She quickly hurries off, and you see a look of disappointment cross your father's face. <sighs> oh. Okay. Uh, but... The three of you return to the living room. You and Emma sit down on the couch and give your father a questioning look. So, Mr. Lee, are you going to tell us how you know my mom? Uh, what do you mean? You seem pretty flustered back there. Did you two date? Uh, what? No! Okay, so you definitely dated. Your dad shakes his head. No, we never dated, though. She was let me guess. The one that got away, Dad. Your dad pauses and shakes his head again. You don't want to hear your old man's stories. Wouldn't you rather watch a movie? Aww! <laughs> I wanted to hear your dating war story. <laughs> All right, keep your secrets. I thought so. Besides, it was years ago, back in high school. Come on. How about I get us some more popcorn? Hey, man. I mean, if she's single, you know, rekindle some love, man. Yes, please. You got someone heads for the kitchen. As soon as he's out of the room, Emma speaks quietly to you. Okay, we have got to get your mom and dad together. I haven't seen my mom smile like that since I was seven. I don't know. My dad doesn't really date. That should be more emphasis for your dad to date. Neither does my mom. It's like we're waiting for each other. Or they're waiting for each other. Are you in? Emma? Of course I'm in. I knew I could count on you. This is gonna be like in one of those YA novels. Young adult novels? Question mark? Your dad suddenly appears in the doorway with a bowl of freshly popped popcorn. Sometimes something's going to be like in a yay, yay novel. Oh, we're just calling them yay novels. If you mean the Hunger Games, I've got a solution. Huh? He holds up the bowl. Hey, Dad, thanks for the popcorn. Here, sit down. You fluff up a pillow and smile innocently at your dad. 
I know that look, you're scheming something. What? I wouldn't dream of it. Okay, okay, you can keep your secrets. Just don't do anything dangerous, okay? We won't. I promise. Now, can we start the movie? Alright, you two, hang on to your hats because this is the funniest movie you'll ever see. What's it called? You snuggle up with Emma and take a handful of popcorn as the opening credits of the movie start to play. I actually haven't seen a funny movie in a long while. Monday morning before class, you and Emma arrive at the homeroom a minute before the bell and take your usual seats. Hey, John. Emma. You coming to my party on Friday night, right? Emma's face lights up. Yes, of course. Someone's happy. Sorry, it's just the biggest party of the season. I never thought I'd be invited to something like it. Thank you, Caleb. You're welcome, Emma. What about you, John? I'll be there. Couldn't miss something like that. Just then the bell rings and Miss Maddox quiets everyone down for the morning announcements. Good morning, Barry High. And hers! Maria winces slightly, but keeps smiling. This is your tiger and bulldog news. Because of the influx of new students, Principal Riviera has decided that this week is Unity Week. For the next five days, every table at lunch needs at least two Barry students and two her students. Huh. 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 Oh, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm dry heaving right now. <laughs> You're Morgan Groan in the corner of the room. Uh, but what if I don't want to? It's just a week, Morgan. Well, I think this is a great idea. I bet we'll find two really cool her students to join our group. Right, Emma? Emma frowns. Hey, why am I the only positive one? Come on, guys. Smile. I hope so. I was going to invite Brian to the table. A few hours later at lunch. Find your friends outside near the statue. Hey, everyone. Have we found two of her students yet? Yep. Jade and Cameron. This is John. John, these two are Cameron Levy and Jade Alley. Oh, I've already met both of you. Did you know that Jade's playing cleanup hitter on the baseball team? That's unheard of for a Frenchman. Thanks for bragging for me, Caleb. So much easier than having to do it myself. Realizing you realize Cameron isn't looking at you. Uh, Cameron, it's okay. Get it. We needed people. I'm not gonna kick you out. Oh, okay. Whew. Uh, all that were... Where do I sit anxiety was giving me middle school flashbacks. I'm still not sure why we're taking the two hearse kids at every table thing is so seriously, by the way. What are they gonna do? Go to the lunch table and check whether you're a hearse ID or a berry one? What? You don't like having Jay do? Actually, Michael, I've been meaning to ask you about football. Are you gonna play next again next fall? Well, that depends on whether Caleb can find someone else decent at playing quarterback. I hope they don't. Your homecoming game was one of the most exciting ones I've ever been to. Well, I'm flattered uh, to have a fan, Jane. I'm afraid you're not my type. Out of the corner of your eye, you notice Caleb looking slightly relieved. What? Whoa, wait. Was I hitting on you? I didn't mean to... It's okay, Jane. That's Michael's sense of humor. Oh, good. Because I definitely didn't hit on you. And, I, uh, Jade, I advise you to stop right there, or else Myra is going to tease you mercilessly. Oh, I'll find someone to ship her with, and it won't be just Michael. Caleb quickly chimes in. Uh, hey, uh, can we get back to talking about football, Cameron? Uh, what you take? I know basically nothing about sports that aren't Quidditch, but I like going to games anyway. Did you go to the homecoming game? Yeah, obviously my favorite part was the marching band ar arrangement of the first day. You hear that, Aiden? Cameron liked your arrangement. Aiden goes bright red. You wrote that? And the piece during the you're performing this spring. 
dude, that's amazing! Ah, uh, technically arranging is a different than composing, but thank you. Oh, I know. I'm so jealous, though. I can't do either. Cameron? Maybe Aiden could teach you. M me? I, I don't know. I'm not sure. My problem is really something that can be taught, anyway. I like the idea of composing, but whether I try, nothing comes to me. No muse, as they say. You need a muse. That gives me an idea. Myra? You're still creative, though. That short story you wrote for creative writing was... captivating. Yours was fun, too, though I could tell it was a fan fiction that, with names changed. The rest of the lunch goes by quickly, and everyone seems to enjoy having Cameron and Jade there. Come on, Michael. Admit it. <sighs> okay, fine. Unity Week hasn't been a completely awful idea. Is it okay if I sit here again tomorrow? Of course, Jade. Actually, my brother and I are having a party this Friday evening, and I'd love it if you came. I'm not gonna pawn. I'm not gonna pawn. He pauses for a second before adding. Uh, you too, Kim. As the smile disappears off of both Cameron and Jade's faces. I don't know. Um, I've usually got a lot of homework. On a Friday? Yeah, you know. Get it out of the way early. I don't think I'll be able to make it either. A Friday night is usually family night. You two are sure about that? Neither of them look at you or respond. Uh, it's cool. I get it. Mercilessly, a bell rings at the moment, and everyone gets up and heads to their class. Oh, it's still a hearse not hanging out with people thing, because you're forced to by school. That afternoon, after band practice, while you're stopping by your locker, your phone buzzes. You notice a text from Myra. John, I need your help. What is it? I need you to convince Cameron and Jade to come to Caleb's party. Cameron can flirt with Aiden, and Jade can flirt with Caleb. Why not do it yourself? You're good at this stuff. If I ask, Caleb and Aiden will know exactly why. If you do, they might just believe it's because you're nice. But I'm not nice. Fuck you. <sighs> Fair. Now go before either of them leaves the school. Oh, look, it's a diamond thing, isn't it? Convince Cameron and or Jay to come to the party and improve their relationships with blah, 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 blah. Each one is 15 diamonds. I'm assuming you could do one and then it'll return to, hey, do you want to do the other and then go home? Go home. Pull out your phone and text Myra again. <laughs> look, Myra, if they don't want to go to the party, we should respect that. If you say so. I'll talk to you later, well, okay? Bye. Cameron and Jade aren't going to the party. Put your phone away and head home. Friday evening. You're hanging out in your room before the party when you get a text from Michael. What is up with texting in this game? John, where are you? You need to get to the party ASAP. Is everything okay? Kara and Max crashed and they're talking smack about you. And? Oh no! People are talking shit behind your back! Oh no, the apocalypse is happening! Oh, who cares? They're trying to stop people from voting for you for prom king. Look, it's bad. I'll be right over. What do I have friends for? Seriously! You're all my friends! Time for some major damage control. Like, you're all supposed to be my friends. Like... Will you be able to turn Caleb's party and your campaign around by now in the next chapter of High School Story? That was... That was sweet and short. Short and sweet. Not really sweet, because it was short. <sighs> Sad face. Anyway, I hope y'all did enjoy the video. Feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe. Head down, screen from below. We got links to social media, our Discord, and a few links to support me and my content. I hope you all did enjoy. I thank you all for watching. Uh, do keep in mind we've got two more things. We've got um, sophomore, and we've got perfect match? Question um, mark. Also, I have a few surprises in store for this week. As long as I, I've been fighting off like today. It took. Let me see what time it is. It's. Um, it took me two hours 
to get ready today um, for videos. I don't know why. I woke up with like a horrible, and I'm talking horrible migraine. Um, pretty much, it it was very very bad, and it, it wasn't. It's it's a sinus migraine too, which is if any of you have experienced that, really sucked. Um, so I took Excedrin migraine, or Excedrin, Excedrin tension headache. I didn't have anything for migraine. Um, and then I also took a Claritin. Didn't have any Claritin D. I was actually, uh, like, going back and forth between Sudafed and Claritin D on the internet. And I'm like, which one? I should run to the store and grab some real quick. I didn't have time. Because this came out. And I was trying to get over being crapped. Um, also, yeah, people talking behind your back. BFD. Um, <clears throat> after the whole... Tumblr, oh my god, people are saying this about you. I, I, I went and I did the video, and then I, I talked with people. And it's like, I'm not going to give people the time of the day. It's what matters with my fans, and my fans matter, and that's it. Um, it's just, to me, a discouraging marker for people to be like, oh, hey, you know, do you want to enjoy this guy's content or not? Um, I don't want people to be shied away because of some idiot who doesn't really watch my, you know, content. Um, wants to sit there and have an opinion when they haven't even watched or understood or at least got the basis of everything. It's really hard to go around and voice everybody, and especially when sometimes you've got a southern accent yourself or sometimes you've got... Um, you don't even pick it up yourself. It's like sometimes my friends have said, hey, you, one minute you sound, you sound southern, and another minute you know. Um... You know, it's not like I'm sitting there, you know, giving someone a, Hey, how you doing? <laughs> um, so it's to the point where I, it's, we're all here for fun. We're all here for laughs. Um, we're all here for the content. So, you know what? Both fingers up and dab on the haters. <laughs> I remember there was something else I was going to say, but I forget. So maybe I'll cover it in another video. Maybe I'll remember. I don't have enough coffee yet, and I this this sinus thing sucks. I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.